Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about Doctor Who Flux. Doctor Who Flux. That is the last six episodes, I believe, of Jodie Whittaker's stint in the TARDIS, the finale of Chris Chibnall's uh, Magnum Dopus, <laughs> you know, uh, where he retconned the Doctor's origin. I'm still trying to figure out the purpose of of his run on Doctor Who other than to ruin the history of Doctor Who. There, there really was nothing else to come out of this. Uh, Jodie Whittaker running around haplessly for two seasons and uh, a massive FU retcon to the fandom. But the trailer promises the return of some classic Who baddies. It does look like the budget has been ratcheted up, but they do seem to be doubling down on the buffoonery uh, the Timeless Children, the worst decision uh, I think they've, they've made recently in, in Doctor Who canon to retcon the Doctor's origin. Of course, the Doctor no longer a Time Lord. The Doctor having had supposedly thousands and thousands of regenerations. Uh, the, the Doctor being murdered time and time and time again by a Gallifreyan scientist that they stole the technology for regeneration or stole the secrets of regeneration from this poor uh, little child that was killed repeatedly until they got it right. Uh, just effing horrible. It's just absolutely horrible. And uh, I don't think they're going to retcon it. I think they're going to double down on it. And, you know, we do have Russell T. Davies coming back, which gave me a glimmer of hope. But he even said that, uh, you know, he's okay with this retcon. I'm not okay with this retcon. I, I think it's a huge finger to the fandom. Uh, that and a lot of other things during Chris Chibnall's run. A lot of fingers to the fandom, I think. Uh, it just seemed like a very uh, mean-spirited uh, mean spirited run. There were some digs there for sure. I think, of course, you know, the Doctor getting an upgrade. Uh, you know, all these other, all these other uh, issues with Doctor Who. Uh, again... You know, it's awesome that Russell T. Davies is coming back. I, I don't think that he is going to be able to salvage the TARDIS, though. Uh, I think we're getting close to the end of the line. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, a lot of people running out of give a shit for Doctor Who. In fact, I had a friend of mine uh, point out that, look at this, Doctor Who losing thousands, thousands of subscribers on Facebook monthly just it it's just bottoming out people don't care now the social media did disappear for a while and it has come back as doctor who flux so we're going to talk about that um we'll see if they flux it up or not before we get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys over 238,000 subs thank you so much for the support geeky is sitting this one out she will be back later uh, she doesn't care about doctor who she dipped out Years ago, she dipped out during Peter Capaldi's first season. I, I stuck it out. I loved Peter Capaldi's Doctor. I uh, did not like the stories. I think uh, the stories were very hit or miss. But man, when he was on, he was on. Um, tried sitting through Whitaker's. I did not have an issue, I'll tell you. Uh, you know, for those who are new to the channel, I had no issue with the Doctor regenerating into a woman. I'm like, okay, whatever. Maybe they're going to try something new. Maybe it'll be, you know, this is what the show needs. Unfortunately... Uh, the show became very, very preachy and very ham-fisted. And uh, Jodie Whittaker, who I think is a fine actress, was not up to snuff in this show. I don't know if it's... She didn't have enough to do. She didn't have enough to work with. But I found her doctor to be very, very weak. Um, and the biggest F you, of course, to the fans being the massive retcon of the doctor's origin. I have a huge, huge problem with this. But uh, yeah, the trailer's out for Flux. It has about 400, 500,000 uh, views so far. They are promising the return of some classic classic monsters, Santarans. We've got uh, the Ood. Um, I don't know if Jadun were in here or not, but the Weeping Angels. Uh, it does look like it has a much bigger budget than uh, what had gone before. I mean, especially Series 11 felt budget cut. Uh, you know, there's a lot of just sitting around in, in coffee shops and talking, uh, kind of boring. But um, here we're going to talk about it. from Den of Geek, Doctor Who Flux sees the Doctor face psychologically terrifying monster. The fandom, <laughs> the angry fandom, who knows? The Doctor will battle monsters old and new in series 13 
but one is scary in a different way to the others, says Chris Chibnall. It's probably a white man again. Um, some extraordinary monsters have been conjured up, uh, adding the familiar instructor, instruction, don't blink. Thanks to Wiley Set, Snoopers, and Stephen Moffat's Instagram page has been known for months. The Weeping Angels uh, will be back. Of course, we've got Santarans back, and we've got uh, furries. Yeah, Doctor Who's got furries in um, Skeletor. I guess Skeletor's <laughs> Skeletor and Chewbacca. Oh my God, this looks like this looks like a modern modern year D and DOC right here. Um. Yeah, so the doctor has to face up to the secrets of her own past as teased in promotional material. Face up to the secrets of her own past. So are we are we going to double, triple down on that retcon? I think we are. Uh, I think we definitely are. In fact, uh, going out to Radio Times a couple of days ago, Doctor Who producer hints at follow-up to Timeless Child Reveal in Series 13. Timeless Child Revelations will be followed up in Doctor Who Series 13. Why? Just retcon the damn thing. Hopefully, hopefully, Russell T. Davies retcons it, but I don't think he's going to. I think it's canon, guys. I think this is canon. This is a Doctor's origin, as, as idiotic as it is. Uh, get ready for some fallout, Doctor Who fans. Oh, boy. Uh, Jodie Whittaker's Doctor will revisit some loose ends from the Timeless Child reveal and is soon to launch Doctor Who Series 13, or at least that's what executive producer Matt Stevens seems to have implied in a new interview shared by the BBC. They're not going to retcon this. Fans of the show will recall the Doctor Who Series 12 centerpiece, centerpiece is that what we're calling it, in which Whittaker's Time Lord discovered several big secrets about herself. She was the first Time Lord ever. No, she wasn't even a Time Lord. Um, the entire Time Lord race was genetically altered using her DNA, and she has lived countless lives that she can't remember. Although he didn't give much away uh, in terms of clues, uh, Strevens, I'm sorry, it's Strevens. Strevens said in the new interview that Doctor Who Series 13 picks up on a lot of things the Doctor learned about herself and her history at the end of Series 12. So yeah, we're going to double down on this. We're going to double down on this. Viewers will be glad to hear those huge revelations will have some sort of consequences. It'll be interesting to see if Joe Martin's Fugitive Doctor, one of those secret regenerations we learned about, will reappear with any new insights. Now, uh, Joe Martin, I thought, was actually pretty good. I'm going to be honest. I thought she was pretty good. I thought she was a more convincing doctor than Jodie Whittaker has been. Unfortunately, her doctor is forever intertwined with this shit show this retcon. Saying what he is willing to divulge about the new series, Strevens added, I can honestly say it's not like the previous two series. <laughs> Honest, it's not the same, except we're going to double down on, on this retcon. It's huge in its scope and its scale and the jeopardy. We've, we've gotten a budget this time, guys. We've got a budget this time, only for six episodes. We've also really tried to go as big as we could with the visuals. Yes, they finally gave us some money in terms of CGI, in terms of design of the series. We really tried to pull out all the stops. So when you watch the show, whether it's in five years' time or whenever, no one will be able to say you made that during the pandemic. We didn't want that to impact uh, the experience for the audience. Uh, Strevens explained how the new series, which will run for only six episodes, came together during development. He said, Series 13 evolved quite late in the day. We had a plan for what we wanted to do. And then the pandemic hit. And what, was, what we uh, realized was that there were certain things we wouldn't be able to do in the normal way, as we'd done for 11 and 12. So rather than be compromised, as what you want for Doctor Who is, very, uh, is for every series to be bigger and better than the last, you don't want to rest on your laurels, Chris Chibnall came up with the brilliant idea of going, why don't we just do something different for our era? Wouldn't it be great if we told one big story? We knew we wouldn't be able to do the same number of episodes in the time that we had uh, come up with the fantastic idea of this overarching narrative. No, it's called the BBC probably called up Chris Chibnall and said, yeah, you're done. You're done. Uh, wrap it up. You're done. We're bringing in Russell T. Davies. Um, each episode has the same bang for the buck. Each episode has the story of the week. Uh, we've still gone for that filmic quality for each episode, but much more than the previous two seasons. We've tied it together with a massive overarch overarching story for the Doctor and huge jeopardy for the Doctor. We look forward to seeing how it plays out for the Timeless Child. Yeah, I think I think they're going to triple down on this. They're going to justify 
this retcon. I don't give a shit. I mean, I have completely checked out from Doctor Who. I might, I might dip back in when Russell T. Davies comes back. Um, but even then, I think the damage has been done. I think it's the curse of fatal death. Um, you know, they're bringing, they're bringing the weeping angels. I mean, all the stuff they avoided at the beginning. Look at how they've had to walk this back. At the beginning, they're like, yeah, we don't want to have any uh, classic monsters, any uh, recognizable monsters except for a Dalek. We're going to go in an all-new direction. We're going to have more realistic stories. We're going to do yada, yada. Now, at the very end, you know, as they're, they're bringing back Russell T. Davies to hopefully salvage the show, they're like, what the hell? Let's bring in the Weeping Angels. Let's bring in the Ood. Let's, let's bring in everything. Uh, you know, everything. Oh, and by the way, by the way, <laughs> uh, they have a new companion. Uh, and this guy wants uh, this dude to be the new the new River Song. So I guess we're going to gender bend River Song too. It seems like we're going back to the Davies era though, doesn't it? The Moffat era uh, with the monsters that they're they're picking um, for sure. Except for this, this guy. What the hell? What the hell is this? Uh, so there we go. I don't know, guys. I, I think it's I think it's too little too late, personally. I mean, I might check it out. It does look like the budget's increased, but a lot of people are just, they're, they're noping out. They're noping out. Uh, Doctor Who Flux begins on Halloween. Uh, good luck with that. Hopefully people are out trick-or-treating and, and not watching, um, not watching this, this trick. Hopefully it's not a trick. Gonna wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.